This video will introduce some of the basic concepts in network theory. Here are examples of two networks. On the left is a social network. This might represent online friendships between a group of five people. On the right, we have a network of connections between countries. For example, a connection could represent a non-stop flight between the two countries. Network theory abstracts away the nature of the nodes and edges. It doesn't matter if they represent countries or people or computers, and the edges can be friendships or flights or actual physical wire. From the point of view of network theory, all that matters is the number of nodes and the pattern of their connections. We can label the nodes of a network using whatever we like. When working on paper, I usually use letters, though in code they're usually just labeled by integers, so they don't have to be. The nodes of a network are just a collection of labels. When we use network theory in practice, we will have some representation in mind. For example, each of the nodes is a person, place, or object, but the maths doesn't care about that. The edges are represented by pairs of nodes, so the edge AB means A and B are joined, AC means A and C are joined, there is no edge AE since these are not directly connected. Note here that we include the edges AB and BA as different edges. This network is an example of an undirected network. That means if A is connected to B, then B is connected to A, and we denote that by drawing edges as a single, undecorated line. Here's an example of a directed network. We represent this visually by putting arrows on the edges. So the edge AB implies we can go from A to B, but there is no edge BA, so we can't go from B to A. You can think of this like a one-way traffic system or water flowing in pipes. Traffic or water is only allowed to travel one way following the direction of the arrows from node to node. There are a number of different ways to refer to edges, nodes, and networks, depending on who you talk to. Mathematicians typically talk about graphs which have edges and vertices, while network scientists, that is, people who study real systems using an abstract network representation of that system, often refer to the nodes and the links of a network. There are also people, like me, who mix up these terminologies freely. If I say node or vertex, I'm speaking about the same thing. Likewise, I may say edge or link, and graph or network. You should get used to this multiplicity of terminology. For a mathematician, a graph G is a pair of sets, V and E. V is a vertex or node set, V1, V2, all the way up to Vn, where the Vi are simply labels. E is the edge set, consisting of the edges Eij, which connect vertices I and J. An edge is simply a pair of vertices, Vi, Vj. If the graph is an undirected graph, then if Eij is in the edge set, so is Eji. For a directed graph, this is not necessarily the case. The number of nodes or vertices is usually labeled by n, and it is simply the number of elements in V. The adjacency matrix is a matrix that helps keep track of if an edge exists between two nodes. The element ij of the adjacency matrix tells us if i and j are connected. If aij is 1, then there is an edge between i and j, otherwise the matrix element is 0. For an undirected network, an edge between i and j implies an edge between j and i, so the adjacency matrix is symmetric. Usually, we have no connections of the nodes to themselves, that is, loops. Loops are also called self-connections or self-edges. These are typically not useful to consider. Think about a social network. Are you friends with yourself? When we don't have self-loops, this means that the diagonal of the adjacency matrix is all zeros. Here's the adjacency matrix for our example graph. Let's look at the first row. To write down the adjacency matrix, we have to choose an order for the vertices. This is arbitrary, but I'll use the obvious order, A, B, C, D, E. The vertex A connects to B, C, and D, but not to E and not to itself. This gives the first row of the matrix 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Pause the video here and make sure you understand how the other rows are constructed, and also notice that the matrix is symmetric. An important property of a node is its degree, that is, how many edges connect to it. The degree is usually denoted by the letter K, with a subscript to label the particular node. Knowing the degrees of the nodes can be very useful for problem solving with networks, as we saw in the bridges problem. Knowing the degrees of all the nodes can also help characterize complicated networks, as we will explore later when we talk about the degree distribution. A sometimes useful formula is that the degree of the node i is the sum of the elements of the ith row of the adjacency matrix. Again, pause here and make sure you understand why this works. Here's our example network from before, together with the degrees of each of its nodes. Pause the video and make sure you understand where each of the numbers come from. We simply count the number of edges coming out of each node. For an undirected network, the number of items in the edge set is twice the number of lines we can see on the network. This is because we only draw one line to represent a two-way connection between A and B. Remember that we have both edge AB and the edge BA. The sum of all the elements in the adjacency matrix is 2E, where capital E is the number of lines we can see on the network diagram. This sum is also given by adding up the degrees of all the nodes. Once again, pause and make sure you understand why. The final idea I want to introduce is the degree distribution. The degree distribution is the function which tells us the probability that a random node has degree k for any k. 
Because it is a probability, the sum of all the possible values has to sum to 1. To calculate the value of pk for any specific network, we just use the ratio nk over n, where nk is the number of nodes of degree k, and n is the total number of nodes. We can compute averages and variances using the probability distribution as usual. For example, the average degree of a network can be computed by using the degree distribution. This is the sum of pk times k over all k. Here's our example from before. Again, pause and make sure you understand how we compute the degree distribution. There are two nodes out of five with degree two, hence p2 is two over five. There are no nodes with degrees other than two, three, or four in this network, hence pk for any other value of k is zero.